Hi, I'm Chris Wardlaw with the New York Daily News, and we're here at the Jacob Javits Center in Manhattan for the 2018 New York International Auto Show. What we want to do here is if you give us about 15 minutes, we're going to walk you through the 12 most important exhibits to see here at the hall if you come to the New York Auto Show. We're going to start from left to right. So as you walk in the building, you're going to want to start on the left-hand side, and then you can just follow us all the way through as we thread through to the right side of the hall. Let's go. Okay, so the first stop here is the Nissan stand, and we're looking at the redesigned 2019 Nissan Altima. Uh, this is the showcase for the future of Nissan sedan design. The car is right behind me there on the stand, and you can see pretty much puts the Maxima to shame, wouldn't you say? So you're going to have two engine choices, a 2.5 liter that's with front wheel drive or all wheel drive, and Nissan is also going to put the same VC turbo, it's a variable compression turbocharged 2 liter that they uh, first used in the 2019 Infiniti QX50 into this car, but it's front wheel drive only. You're not gonna be able to get a V6 engine. Uh, other things that you should know about this car is that the interior is dramatically upgraded in terms of its materials, its colors, its trim, even the accents. Uh, there are expanded driver assistance and collision avoidance technologies, uh, including ProPilot Assist, which is like a self-driving type of a technology. And finally, one of my favorite things about the Altima has always been its NASA-inspired zero-gravity seating. That continues here in this car. Okay, your next stop is gonna be the Hyundai stand. Now there's three interesting things to see here. Number one is that vehicle right there. That is the new Kona EV. It's got an estimated 250 miles of electric driving range. That's pretty impressive. Pricing's not available yet, but I guarantee you it is going to give the Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Bolt EV a run for their money. Over there, you've got a refreshed 2019 Hyundai Tucson. Not a lot of big news there. It's just a refresh, but that's a pretty popular small crossover SUV. What you're gonna wanna see is this vehicle right here behind me. That is the redesigned 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe. It replaces the Santa Fe Sport. It's a five passenger vehicle. The old seven passenger Santa Fe will continue as the Santa Fe XL. It's not redesigned yet because Hyundai's coming out with a new eight passenger, larger SUV in a year or two. Now, as far as this Santa Fe right here, this is what you need to know about it. it has a 185 horsepower, 2.4 liter inline four, or a turbocharged two liter that's making 235 horsepower. You're also gonna be able to get a 2.2 liter turbo diesel four cylinder engine in this vehicle, making 190 horsepower and 322 pound feet of torque. There's an eight speed automatic transmission, a more sophisticated all wheel drive system. It's bigger inside for people in cargo, and it's got two cool new safety features. One is a rear occupant alert, which reminds drivers if you've left maybe kids or pets in the vehicle, but it will also send you a text message alert Say if your kid goes out to the driveway, gets in and accidentally locks him or herself inside. And then there's also a safe exit assist, which is designed to prevent the doors from opening if there's a vehicle or a cyclist approaching from behind so that you don't open the door right into that vehicle. I think those are two pretty important innovations there. This, by the way, is the vehicle that's gonna continue as the Santa Fe XL, completely different vehicle. Okay, so your next stop is going to be the Volkswagen stand. Now, there's two important uh, concepts that you're gonna wanna check out here. They're both based on the Atlas SUV. The first is called the uh, Atlas Sport Cross, and that's basically a more rakish five-passenger version of the Atlas. Uh, it's shorter by seven and a half inches. It's got a 310 horsepower mild hybrid uh, drivetrain as standard, or a 355 horsepower plug-in hybrid drivetrain. The plug-in will give you 26 miles of electric driving range, and this previews a production model that is coming in 2019. 
Over here we have something that is pretty cool. It's the Atlas Tan Oak pickup truck. Now that's also based on the Atlas SUV. Uh, it's more than a foot longer. The cargo bed's over five feet long. Uh, it holds five people. Uh, it's got a 276 horsepower V6 engine with four motion all wheel drive, almost 10 inches of ground clearance. There's a really good chance Volkswagen is gonna build that and it's gonna be a direct competitor to vehicles like the Honda Ridgeline. Oh, hey, I didn't notice this when I was here yesterday. That's pretty cool. I don't know if you're a Hot Wheels fan or not, but I think I kind of like that Hot Wheels edition of the uh, Camaro. Okay, so uh, the reason I brought you over here to the Kia stand is because they've got a brand new, completely redesigned K900 luxury sedan that's coming to market for 2019. Um, Kia can actually do real luxury. I mean, I know the brand has got some, some uh, image problems, but that is a genuine luxury car. It's got a twin turbocharged 3.3 liter V6 engine, torque vectoring all wheel drive. Uh, the driving dynamics were tuned by a former BMW M division engineer. It's got a really plush interior with available premium Napa leather and 64 color ambient lighting. New driver assistance and collision avoidance technologies. It's got a next generation infotainment, dis uh, infotainment system with a 12.3 inch display and a special Uvo Lux version of uh, the connected services program that's exclusive to K900 owners. And it's got a 17 speaker Harman Kardon premium audio system. Now, whether you like the styling or not, it's up to you, but that is a pure luxury car. Okay, the green car behind me is the redesigned 2019 Subaru Forester. I know, it looks pretty much like the old Forester, but it is improved in almost every way. Number one, it's on a brand new vehicle architecture that Subaru promised is gonna be a lot safer than the old Forester. And it's not like the old Forester was a slouch. It was one of the best vehicles in its segment, but this one is still gonna protect your family better than the old one did. Uh, there's more passenger space, there's more cargo space. Uh, the interior materials are upgraded. As far as mechanicals are concerned, you've got a uh, 182 horsepower, 2.5 liter boxer, four cylinder engine, a standard continuously variable transmission, Standard all-wheel drive and Subaru's X-Mode traction and hill descent control system is standard on most Forester models. Uh, Subaru still supplies 8.7 inches of ground clearance with this vehicle, so that means it sits up higher off the ground than most vehicles in its segment for better off-roading capability. And this year, Subaru's EyeSight driver assistance and collision avoidance technology is standard on all versions. It goes on sale later this year. Okay, the car behind me is not the most exciting thing on the planet, I will admit, but it's probably the car that most people need to be driving most of the time. What is it? It's the redesigned 2019 Honda Insight, and it's not the innovative two-seater that it was originally, nor, as you can see, is it that Prius wannabe dorkmobile that it became. Uh, it's a very stylish sedan. It's positioned between the Civic and the Accord. It's got a 151 horsepower hybrid drivetrain, it's expected to get 55 miles per gallon in the city. There's seating for five people, plus a huge 15.1 cubic foot trunk. You can probably buy this car for, I don't know, 25, 30 grand, drive it for years, get 55 miles per gallon the whole time, and you'll have plenty of room. Okay, can I just point something out here? That white car right there, that's the redesigned Toyota Avalon. How do you tell the difference between that and a Lexus? Okay, the red uh, SUV behind me is one of the most important vehicles at the show. 
Uh, it's the redesigned 2019 Toyota RAV4. As you know, the RAV4 is one of the most popular vehicles in America, and this is probably one of two best-selling vehicles in the small crossover SUV segment. It's a complete redesign. The vehicle's put on Toyota's new global platform, which is engineered specifically to be more fun to drive. In terms of the styling, I see a little bit of 4Runner there. I see some Jeep in there. Basically, Toyota's going for a more rugged look, so you can stop calling this thing a cute ute finally. Uh, the engine choices are a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine or a gas electric hybrid drivetrain. Each one offers more power and fuel economy than before, although Toyota's not stipulating specific figures just yet. There's an optional torque vectoring all wheel drive system, and the, the RAV4 has uh, better off roading capability because of shorter front and rear overhangs plus some increased ground clearance. Um, Toyota Safety Sense, driver assistance and collision avoidance technologies are standard equipment, and uh, most versions will have a next, uh, next generation Intune infotainment system, complete with Apple CarPlay finally, and Amazon Alexa. You're gonna be able to buy that thing at the end of 2018. Okay, what we're looking at behind me is the brand new Cadillac XT4. It's a small luxury crossover SUV. Prices start in the uh, mid 30s, although to get the kind of equipment you're probably gonna want on this, you're definitely gonna be paying between 40 and 50 for it. It's got a turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine, nine speed automatic transmission with front or all wheel drive. And Cadillac promises that it's gonna have the roomiest back seat in its segment. Just kind of an important thing to know because uh, the cargo space is pretty cramped. Um, it goes on sale in the fall of 2018. All right, if you're like me and you like station wagons, then you're gonna love this. This is the redesigned Volvo V60 and I think it's pretty terrific. Basically what you've got here is a scaled down version of the larger V90. There's a T5 version that gives you 250 horsepower and front wheel drive, or you can get a T6 version with 316 horsepower and all wheel drive. Uh, it's got the now familiar Scandinavian approach to its interior design. There's an available 15 speaker Bowers and Wilkins audio system. And behind the rear seat, there's 18.7 cubic feet of cargo space. Most importantly though, instead of buying or leasing, which are the traditional ownership methods, you can actually subscribe to vehicle use through the Care by Volvo program. It's kind of like when you subscribe to a smartphone and uh, everything's all inclusive, right? Same thing here with this vehicle. Okay, we're here at the Acura stand and we're looking at the redesigned 2019 Acura RDX. Super important vehicle. It's important for Acura. It's important for consumers because it's one of the best-selling compact luxury SUVs. It's a complete redesign on a brand new platform. It's got a turbocharged 271 horsepower, two liter four cylinder engine, a 10 speed automatic transmission, and you can get front wheel drive or fans of super handling all wheel drive rejoice, you can get that as an option. It finally returns to the RDX. What that means is through torque vectoring, it'll put up to 70% of the engine power to just one of the rear wheels. Acura says it's got more passenger and cargo space than before. The interior's got upgraded materials, uh, brand new seats that are more comfortable, uh, safety's upgraded, and there is a new sporty looking A-spec version that you can buy. Uh, the only potential fly in the ointment, so to say, is uh, something called new uh, true touchpad infotainment screen control. Basically, there's a pad on the center console and you use your fingertip to kind of trace and use the screen. Now, in Lexus models, that doesn't work so well. Acura swears they've improved on what Lexus does. Okay, so I've saved the best for last. This is technically a concept, but it's actually a production vehicle uh, that you're gonna be able to buy in early calendar 2019. This is the Lincoln Aviator, and it looks sensational. Uh, this is not your typical Ford rebadge. It's on a brand new rear wheel drive platform with all wheel drive as an option. And by moving to a rear drive platform, Lincoln has been able to get the proportions exactly right. 
Uh, you're gonna have a twin turbocharged V6 with uh, either gas or plug-in hybrid versions um, available. And uh, there's three rows of seating for up to seven passengers. Lincoln swears to God that somebody my size, six feet tall, kind of big, is gonna be able to fit in the third row seat. The interior is patterned after the Navigator SUV for an exclusive look and feel. And I have a feeling that the Aviator is going to quickly become one of the best-selling Lincolns in the lineup. Uh, this vehicle clearly has the power to change what people think of the Lincoln brand. Okay, that's it from the New York Auto Show. If nothing else, if you come down to Javits Center, these are the vehicles you really need to see. These are the most important ones that debuted at the show. Uh, hope to see you here again next year, and uh, see you later. Thank you.